What's up, softball players? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk about self-talk. Or where is it? There it is. Obviously, on the field, when your confidence is high, your performance is usually high, right? There's a good correlation there. And when you're in your head telling yourself that you can't, that you won't, that you'll strike out, that you can't get this hitter out, things go downhill pretty quick. So in today's video, we'll talk about confidence and self-talk and some strategies that you can use right away to improve the narrative in your head. All right, so let's jump into negative self-talk. Obviously, this is important for softball, for fast pitch, for slow pitch, for baseball, for every sport, but we'll do it in a softball context today. And really, it's a shame that we do this to ourselves as humans, but you know, we do sort of talk smack in our own heads and we need to learn to control that narrative. So the question is, how much do we control our narrative? Obviously, the things that we say to ourselves, they come from somewhere, right? Like the way you were raised, your environment, like your interactions with your teammates, everyone's also just different. So, but you always have some amount of control of how you can sort of stop and analyze it and say, you know, that's not where I'm going with my thoughts. And you can make a plan to curb some of this stuff before it gets out of hand. Because a lot of it, when you start to really think about it, is nonsense. So obviously with self-talk, this can happen in a game, before a game, after a game, any of those times. One of the big things to start yourself to reset is to take a deep breath. So just take a long, slow, deep breath. And then after that, that's sort of like your stopping point where you're going to slow yourself down and get out of that bad headspace and start to move towards a better one. You can acknowledge like, hey, I can tell that I'm in my head, that I'm being really negative right now, that I'm tearing myself down. That deep breath helps you go, okay, now what do we do next? So one of the first things to do in, in analyzing this, and this can help you um, sort of reframe what you're saying to yourself, is would someone else say this to you? Obviously, we are our own worst critics. And if you're in your head being like, you always strike out, you never come through in these situations, you're just going to walk this next girl. Would other people realistically say that stuff to you? Like, would your parents say that? Would your coach say that? Would your, even your, the teammate that you're the least amount of close with, would they say that to you? No. Like, honestly... Some of the stuff that we say to ourselves is shocking. I've done this my whole career as a baseball player too. I was running out to the field sometimes terrified and very convinced at times that I was going to walk the first three hitters and get yanked right out of the game. And that literally never happened. And my teammates never thought I was going to do that. It's nonsense. So once you take that deep breath and you ask yourself, would someone else say this? The answer is almost always no. They're always These people would always be nicer to you. And this is something you need to remind yourself after that deep breath. No one thinks I choke every time under pressure. That's ridiculous. Lots of people believe in me. That's why I'm on this field. That's why I'm in this game. That's why I'm going out there today. I'm here for a reason. I belong on this team. I have a role. I've been fulfilling it. This is my time, right? So just remind yourself that you are your absolute worst critic way worse than other people. And you would also never say the stuff that you say to yourself to someone else. So it's a really good reminder. Once you slow down, take that deep breath to, to think about it in the context of would someone else say that to you? Number two, just calling out whether what you're saying is true or false. Is it actually true that you always choke? Certainly it's not. Is it always true that you're going to walk this hitter or that you're probably not going to make it very deep in this game and that your team's going to lose, that you can't beat this other team, that you can never be that big recruit? Absolutely, that's not true. It's really just your doubts getting amplified. It's your little anxiety that we all have as human beings just eating away at us. So call out the false self-talk. Give yourself a, you know, just remind yourself that you don't strike out that often. You do come through a lot of the time and you definitely don't choke under pressure every time that you're a solid fielder. You're a solid catcher. You're a good outfielder, even if you sometimes make mistakes, which everyone does even at the highest level. So remember call out the false self-talk just like someone else might, you know, if there's someone else was talking smack on a friend of yours in real life, you'd probably come to their defense, right? Be like, no, she, you know, she, she's a good fielder. She's a good player. She belongs on this team. Call it out for yourself. Defend yourself against your voice in that same way. And the last one for today is what experiences can help you remind you that you do belong in this situation and that you can come through or, tackle whatever challenge that you're facing. And this is where leveraging your preparation and consistency of your routines and past good experiences really helps. So, you know, this is like, hey, I had a really good pregame today. 
I stuck to my routine this week. I had a couple great practices. I had a couple good workouts. I've gotten through this situation also before. I've pitched out of bases loaded situations. I've thrown runners out before, even after making a bad throw. I've made errors before and then gone on to have good games afterwards, right? This is the time to remind yourself that you have done this in the past and that you will continue to do this in the, in the future. There are plenty of experiences in your memory bank that you can easily draw on when you're feeling nervous and doubting yourself and afraid of what could happen in the situation. There's a huge laundry list of them. So dig into that bag, grab a positive experience from your past, bring it to the forefront and remind yourself while you're on the mound or while you're on the circle or while you're in the batter's box, when you step out of the box, in the dugout, whenever it is. Take a moment, take that deep breath, remind yourself, I've been here before. Remember last week, last year, when I had that big hit in the situation? There's no reason that can't be today. That can't be tonight, right? So obviously all this stuff with self-talk is difficult. It's not an easy thing, but you do have to put in the work in. And when you do put in the work and try to stop yourself and say, you know what? No, I'm going to control this conversation. I'm at least to an extent in control over what's going to be said to myself in the future, then you can start to make a better narrative. It takes practice. It takes work. None of these are magic are magic tricks, magic bullets. So you do have to put in the work and try to reframe the narrative in your own head. And then you can have much better self-talk, not just on the softball field, but in everyday life as well. Remember that you need to be your number one fan. Even if your parents and your coaches and your friends are huge supporters of yours, you should always be the number one fan, the foam finger waving fan who really deeply believes in yourself. And sometimes it's hard to be that person. But when you continually work on it, take the deep breath, reset, analyze what you're saying to yourself and go through some of these exercises we talked about today that can really help you improve your mindset in the future. All right. Leave a comment below. Do you have any other tips for uh, working on your self-talk? What's worked for you? Leave something in the comments and we'll talk through it. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you here in the next softball video.